In this Diablo 2 Resurrected Necromancer build guide, we're going to be covering the Summoner Necromancer. This is an endgame Necromancer build that can get you through Nightmare and Hell difficulty in Diablo 2 Resurrected. If you're looking for an endgame Necromancer build, then this guide is for you. The Summoner Necromancer conjures skeletons and resurrects corpses to fight against the forces of evil. You'll be using Raise Skeleton, Clay Golem, and Revive to conjure your minions, Corpse Explosion to deal AoE damage, and Decrepify, Amplify Damage, and Life Tap to help your minions during fights. While playing as a summoner, you'll send your minions to the front to do the hack and slash, while you use the Corpse Explosion spell and curses to aid them. This build is intended to be used for Nightmare and Hell difficulties starting around level 40. You can start the game with this build, but I personally recommend you use our Bone Necromancer beginner build instead, and then respec into this one. If you're playing and want to respec into this build though, the easiest way to do it is by claiming the Den of Evil reward from Akara at the Rogue Encampment. You'll get three respecs, one for each difficulty, and you'll need to be on the same difficulty to reclaim them. Like most builds in Diablo 2 Resurrected, our stats distribution will focus on assigning enough points into strength to meet equipment requirements, and then assigning everything else into vitality to gain as much life as possible. Having a Hellfire Torch and an Annihilus will greatly reduce your stat investment into strength. These unique charms provide between plus 10 and 20 to all attributes and plus 10 to 20 to all elemental resistances. Having both in your inventory will save you between 20 and 40 stat points that you can spend into vitality, greatly increasing your health pool. The additional passive resistances will also allow you to depend less on plus all resistance equipment, opening up more options. If you don't have a Hellfire Torch or an Annihilus yet, I strongly recommend that you get them as soon as you can. Perfect rolled ones are very expensive, but you can get bad ones rolled for very affordable prices. Make sure to get a low roll when you're starting off and then upgrade it when you have enough money. The Summoner Necromancer focuses on the summoning tree, but you'll also be spending some points in the Poison and Bone and Cursed Trees. You'll use the following skills when playing this Diablo II Resurrected Necromancer build. Raise Skeleton. Skeletons are by far the most powerful summon the Necromancer has. You can have multiple skeletons active at the same time and they attack from melee range. This is very useful because when you encounter enemies, your skeletons will march forward, creating a living wall between you and your enemies. This allows you to summon new skeletons and spam corpse explosions safely. Skeletons become more powerful and raise in number with each point assigned into the skill. They'll also gain additional life and damage from the Skeleton Mastery and Elemental Resistances from the Summon Resist skill. Skeleton Mastery. This skill greatly increases the damage and hit points of both your skeletons and of any monster that you summon using the Revive skill, making it a must for this build. Since you'll have a lot of skeletons and hopefully some monsters, you should see great benefits here. Summon Resist. This skill passively increases elemental resistances of all of your minions, including skeletons, resurrected enemies, and your golem. You'll only want to assign one point here, as you'll get a lot of plus skills from your equipment, which will be more than enough for your minions. Clay Golem. The Clay Golem is great because you can cast it as many times as you like, allowing you to maintain 100% uptime. This particular Golem applies a slow when it hits enemies, which works great against all bosses and can be stacked with your Decrepify Curse. Since you don't need a corpse, the Golem is also your main way of killing enemies when you're starting off with your army. Revive. This skill allows you to resurrect any monster with increased health. In addition, it'll get all the benefits from Skeletal Mastery and Summon Resist, making it the most powerful minion you can get. The biggest downside of this skill is that resurrected monsters will only last for 180 seconds, at which point they'll die. This means that you'll need to constantly revive enemies after each battle to keep your army going. For this reason, I only recommend assigning around 5 to 10 points here. You'll get a lot of plus skills from your equipment, and you won't have enough corpses to keep up if you've maxed it out. Revive monsters will do their normal and skilled attacks, but they will not raise other monsters. Some monsters have special attacks such as lightning, fireballs, meteors, blizzards, and more. Once you convert these monsters, they will use their special attacks against their former friends. It is also worth mentioning that revive monsters will not act like your regular minions, but instead retain their regular mechanics and movements that you would expect to see when they are facing you. This means that cowardly monsters will usually move away from the battlefield, and others might be slow or have idle times. Corpse Explosion Widely considered one of the best skills in Diablo II Resurrected, Corpse Explosion allows you to explode your enemy's bodies, dealing a percentage of the corpse life as 50% physical damage and 50% fire damage in a large AoE. Since Nightmare and Hell difficulty monsters have very large health pools, this spell only gets better as you further progress into the game. One very important thing to consider, though, is that once you explode a corpse, you won't be able to raise a skeleton or revive the body, meaning that you'll often have to manage the amount of corpses at your disposal. I highly recommend that you always prioritize maintaining your army over dealing damage. Amplify Damage. This skill lowers enemy physical resistance by 100%. It will also remove the physical immunity of many monsters, allowing you to be able to clear all content in the game. 
This skill works on both regular enemies and bosses, and you should use it when you want to maximize the amount of damage and are not worried so much about losing skeletons or resurrected enemies. Since Corpse Explosion deals 50% physical damage, enemies under this curse will take additional damage as well. Decrepify. This skill curses a group of enemies applying three different effects at the same time, making them move and attack slower, deal less damage, and makes them take amplified physical damage. I personally prefer the skill over amplified damage because it allows your skeletons and revived monsters to stay alive for a larger period of time, even if fights take a little longer. The slow effects stack with the Clay Golem slow, allowing you to stunlock some bosses and uniques. The Decrepify radius is rather small, and assigning more points into it will only increase its duration so you want to repeatedly cast it when facing multiple enemies. Life Tap. This spell curses a group of monsters so that damaging them gives the attacker, in this case your summons, life. This curse is great to restore your army's health, and I personally like to use it every two encounters or so to make sure all my units are at full life. Since this guide is starting at level 40, you'll want to first focus on your raised skeletons and skeleton mastery, and then work towards corpse explosion. You should have around 43 skill points at level 40, 39 from levels, and 4 from quests. You should have your skills placed in the following manner when beginning this build. At level 90, you should have 101 skill points to distribute, 89 from levels, and 12 from quests, and they should look like this. Since your minions will be the ones doing the fighting, you'll want to focus all of your equipment on making them stronger with plus skills and leave your own resistances as a secondary priority. When you're starting off, you'll obviously have less gear, so here are some cheap rune words and unique items that you can use while you search for better gear. First up are helmets, and the first one is the lore rune word, and this helmet provides plus one to all skills as well as 30% lightning resistance, which is perfect for this build. You can farm the runes by completing Nightmare Countess. Uniques. Any helmet that provides plus skills works great here, for example, Tarnhelm, Peasant Crown, or Worm Skull. For weapons, the first thing you want to be on the lookout for is wands. Wands are the best way to increase your plus skills early on. You can buy them from merchants at any town or search for magical, rare, or unique ones. For secondary stats, you want to search for a faster cast rate or any other skill mentioned in this build. Next up for weapons is the Spirit Rune Word. This rune word provides plus 2 to all skills and 25-35% to faster cast rate. It also increases your defense thanks to faster hit recovery and vitality. The additional mana is also great. Finding a four-socketed weapon can be a little tricky, but stay on the lookout for crystal swords, long swords, and broad swords. If you happen to play the secret cow level, if you find any unsocketed of these types of weapons, you can get a guaranteed four sockets from Larzuk by completing the Siege of Harrogoth quest. And last up is the white rune word. Runes for this wand can be farmed by running Nightmare Countess. While better suited for a Bone Necromancer, this wand is still a great budget option for this build, providing plus 4 to Skeleton Mastery, faster cast rate, and plus 3 to Poison and Bone skills, which includes Corpse Explosion. A very important note here is that you can craft the White Rune Word on wands of normal rarity that already have plus skills. So if, for example, you craft it on a wand that already has plus 2 to raise skeletons, you'll keep that mod when you craft the Rune Word. Moving along to shields, the first one is Ancient's Pledge Rune Word. And this shield doesn't provide plus skills, but compensates by granting a huge boost to resistances, allowing you to survive early hell. Next is Shrunken Heads. These shields usually come with plus skills on them, so make sure to check their mods each time you find one. First up for armor is the Stealth Rune Word. This is by far one of the best armor that you can get early on. The 25% faster cast rate is nice, while the poison resistance and faster hit recovery provides more survivability. Then you have Uniques. Any unique armor with plus skills is also great for this build, like for example the Spirit Shroud, Skin of the Viper Magi, Triangle's Scales, or Quahagon's Wisdom, etc. When it comes to gloves, you'll want to focus on defensive stats such as life and resistances. For the belt, you'll want something with life and resistances. you want to search for faster run-walk speed on your boots as well as resistances and life. Run-walk speed is important to quickly navigate through the map, so make sure to get it. You'll want to search for rings that have life, stats, and resistances, as well as faster cast rate. Try to find an amulet that provides plus necro skills or necro summoning skills. Other than that, you want to search for stats, health, and resistances. For charms, you'll mainly want to look for plus life, plus mana, and plus summoning skills. Once you're reaching max level, you'll want to start searching for the following equipment to complete your character. First up again is helmets, and the one you want to be on the lookout for is Harlequin Crest, which is a unique. This helmet provides plus two to all skills as well as life, mana, and attributes. You can insert a gem or rune of your liking by adding a socket to it. 
For your weapon, there are really two options, and the first is the Beast Rune Word. This Rune Word provides you with a level 9 fanaticism aura, greatly increasing your minion's attack speed. You lose some skill points, but the overall damage increase more than compensates for it. The other is the Heart of Oak Rune Word. This weapon provides plus 3 to all skills, as well as plus all resistances and faster cast rate. You'll also be able to cast a level 4 Oak Sage that will greatly increase your minion's health. When it comes to shields, you want to craft the Spirit Rune Word. This shield provides plus 2 to all skills and 25-35% to faster cast rate. It also provides many defensive stats such as elemental resistances, faster hit recovery, and vitality. For your second weapon set, you'll want the Call to Arms Rune Word and Spirit Shield Rune Word. The Call to Arms Rune Word provides you with the Battle Command and Battle Order Shouts, which are great buffs. Battle Command increases your skill level, allowing you to summon stronger minions, and the Battle Order increases your party's life, mana, and stamina, making your minions even stronger. For armor, you'll want to craft the Enigma Rune Word. This armor provides plus two to all skills, as well as a lot of strength and life. In addition, it provides you with the Teleport Spell. Having the Teleport Spell is great for this build, as all minions will spawn around you each time you appear somewhere. This creates a meat shield around you and musters your forces in a single place. This can be critical in some fights, as you can teleport behind enemy lines and have your army get rid of archers and spellcasters from behind. When it comes to gloves, you'll want the Mage Fist Unique. These gloves provide you with faster cast rate and plus one to fire skills, which includes your corpse explosion. They also have a good amount of defense and increase your mana regeneration. When it comes to belts, you want the Arachnid Mesh, which is a unique. This belt provides plus one to all skills, as well as providing plus faster cast rate and increasing your maximum mana. For boots, you want Alder's Advance. These boots provide a massive plus 40% faster run walk, as well as fire resistance and life. There are other options, such as Natalia's Soul. These boots provide plus 40% faster run walk speed and between 15-25% to 25 to cold and lightning resistances. Alternatively, you could use the War Traveler Unique. These boots provide plus 25% faster run walk speed, strength, and an increase to your magic find by a massive 30-50%. to 50%. When it comes to rings, you have two different options, both providing plus skills. For more survivability, you want 2 times Bull Kathos' Wedding Band to increase your life. For more mana, you want 2 times Stone of Jordan to increase your mana. When it comes to your amulet, you want Mara's Kaleidoscope. This amulet provides plus 2 to all skills, as well as 20 to 30 to all resistances, and 5 to all attributes. Additionally, you can use a crafted amulet. You can search for a crafted amulet with plus skills, stats, life, and resistances. For charms, you'll mainly want to look for plus life, plus mana, and plus summon skills. You'll want to get the Act 2 Might Mercenary for this build. The Might Aura greatly increases the damage output of your skeletons and revived minions. When it comes to equipment, you'll want to get an Obedience Rune Word for the weapon and a Fortitude Rune Word for the armor and Andare's Visage for the helmet. Final Tips Remember that auras affect minions, so any type of equipment that you can get that provides auras will greatly boost your minions' damage. If you're having trouble raising your army, head to Act 1, as enemies are much easier to kill and skeletons aren't affected by the body you use to create them. Try to stay at a safe distance at all times. Some enemies might use spells that pierce through your minions and you might get killed. Experiment with their revivability and see what monsters work best with your playstyle. This will let you know what corpse you can explode and which ones you should save to use revive on. Stay tuned for more Diablo 2 build guides and be sure to check out our Diablo 2 Resurrected Wiki for more information about the game. Make sure you bookmark the Rune Words page because you'll be needing this a lot throughout your playthroughs. What did you guys think of the Necromancer Summoning Guide? What other builds are you using? Let us know in the comments below.